Hey guys, I'm Jessie and today I have my September reading wrap up for you. I surprisingly read quite a few books in the month of September. For the month of September, I focused pretty much mainly on sci-fi books. So I did sci-fi September to kind of push myself to read some of the sci-fi books that I already own that have been kind of like pushed to the back burner because I do read mostly fantasy. But I was pleasantly surprised. A lot of these books I ended up really, really, really enjoying. I did not have any five star reads in the month of September though. So that was kind of a bummer. But some of these books came pretty close. I did have a couple DNFs, but it's okay. It was expected. I managed to knock off a couple books from my um, exploding TBR. So now I think I only have three books left on that that I need to get to in the month of October. And then I can do my final quarter exploding TBR, which I'm really excited about because I have been going through a lot of my like physically owned books and either reading them and loving them or reading them and not loving them, DNFing them and getting rid of them. Because I am working on cleaning out these shelves, even though I am still buying books to replace them. But you know, I'm moving into another part of the house soon, at some point, whenever we can get that office finished. And I want to make sure that all the books that come with me are ones that I really want. So let's go ahead and get into all of the sci-fi books that I read in the month of September. First we have The Humans by Matt Haig. This was a really fun sci-fi book. I ended up giving this like four stars because I really enjoyed reading it. There was a lot of humor and there was a lot of like a serious touching moments that were kind of laced with the humor of this book and honestly I really had a good time. In this book, we follow an alien who has come to Earth because he is supposed to destroy the information that one human has discovered about um, like intergalactic travel. And the place where he is from, they do not believe that humans are ready for that knowledge. They are afraid of humans and kind of rightfully so, you know? So he comes down and he takes on the body of this professor who has like kind of unlocked the key to space travel and he lives as him. And it is hysterical, this alien kind of learning to be human and he has a wife and like a super moody teenage son and a dog and you get to find out a lot about the alien and the other aliens and how they think about humanity. And honestly, I just had a really good time with this. So if you haven't read this one, I would pick it up. I also read Heart of Iron by Ashley Poston, and this was fun. I gave this three stars. This was um, one of my exploding TBR books, and I'm glad that I read it. I had a good time, but it wasn't anything that I was like, oh my gosh, I love it, right? And it was kind of like predictable YA, but honestly, I still had a good time. There was some uh, insta-lovey moments that I wasn't feeling, but I did like that one of our like main characters in our little group, um, we have like some good gay characters in there, so that was good. In this book, we are following this girl who is a like space pirate, and it's her and this like group of space pirates, and then she has this AI that has been with her ever since she can first remember. But she is missing a big chunk of her memory. And she's trying to like fix her failing AI robot friend because he is malfunctioning and she doesn't know like how to live without him. So she's trying to figure out how to get to this like mysterious spaceship that might hold the key. So she's trying to get kind of the map to that place and she ends up basically kidnapping a member of the like royal family and he goes kind of on this journey with these ragtag kids but he kind of also has his own reasons for going and finding this spaceship as well. It's got a lot of like politics mixed in and while I did enjoy it, it was a three star read. It was fun but it wasn't anything that was like oh my god I need more. 
I still might read book two, but I'm not like super pressed on it. Then I read Iron Widow. And again, this is a four star read. I really enjoyed it. There were a lot of elements to this book that I enjoyed quite a bit, especially the, you know, the fight the patriarchy. And then we do have love interests. We have two. And I love how the author, instead of making it like a love triangle, legitimately made this a polyamorous relationship. And I thought that that was a really great idea and a good twist on the love triangle. In this one, we are following our main character and she is trying to avenge the death of her sister. In this world, um, there are like pilots and pilots are just like these big celebrities and they're protecting the realm from these aliens. And what they have to do is they get in these like big ships called a chrysalis and then they have a female pilot who helps them power the ship. But nine times out of 10, the female pilot is killed and like overtaken by the spirit of the man because they have to like meld minds. It's kind of confusing, but when you're reading it, it starts to make sense. So she signs herself up to be one of these concubine pilots because that is what killed her sister. And she ends up basically the guy who killed her sister and becoming what they call an iron widow, who is a female pilot that ends up overtaking the male. And it is very rare, very uncommon. Now, this is a highly patriarchal world almost too much so, but I still really, really enjoyed this book and I'm really interested to see where the rest of the series goes. Then I read Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. It is the first of the Southern Reach trilogy and I honestly still don't know what I think about it. It was so weird, but not in a bad way because like I know Jeff Vandermeer's writing is weird. He writes weird sci-fi. Like I really loved Born by Jeff Vandermeer and this is my second Vandermeer. I still think I liked Born more. Born was like five stars. I loved it. Um, this one was good. I have not seen like the movie adaptation but it was good and it was so weird. We follow this like group of women as they're going into Area X which is this like weird unexplained zone and they're supposed to be like uncovering its secrets and it is wild. Like there is no good way to explain this. Um, at least in this book, I'm pretty sure in further books we get a little bit more, but in this book we don't really get answers. <laughs> we are left with more questions than answers. And honestly, I was kind of okay with that because I do have, this is a bind up of all of them. I only read the first one. I probably will continue, but I don't know if my brain is ready for it. Like at this point, our characters don't even have names. They are the biologist, the psychologist, like the anthropologist, like that is their names. Like they're stripped of their names and their identities when they are sent into area X and like just expected to do their job. It's wild. If you've read this, let me know what you think because honestly, I'm having a hard time wrapping my brain around it. Then I read Last Girl on Earth and this is a standalone YA sci-fi. And I gave it like two stars, I think. Like I was bored. It had potential, but it really did nothing with it. We're following a girl who is the last human on earth. Um, aliens had basically overtaken all the humans and destroyed them all because they said that they were not like worthy of having earth because of how they treated it, how they treated other people, things like that. Her family kind of gave her up to a sympathetic alien who protected her her whole life. So she has grown up amidst these aliens pretending to be one of them. And her father and her sister really do love her, but she knows that she's different from everyone else. And during this book is when she's taking these like really important exams in order to like see what her life is going to be because they basically have to all be conscripted into the army and it's kind of like like a placement test and she's going through these placement testings and this new kid shows up this new boy and it's like very insta love and you're like okay 
And like this whole book, you're wondering when they're going to figure out that she's not one of them because she has like fake gills that they had installed on her, her family had, and everyone else, like they have gills and they go swimming and like she almost drowns and this new boy saves her and like doesn't say anything, but like she shouldn't be able to drown, but she like trains and works harder because I guess these aliens are more physically capable than human bodies are. And she's still really good at everything because she like works really hard. And then the end of it is just super anticlimactic. We're like, okay, and? Like, there was so much build up to them finding out that she was a human amongst them. And it felt like there was like little to no payoff. So honestly, I was kind of bored with this one. I read it really quick because it's short, but probably gonna unhaul this. Then I read A Winter's Orbit. I really liked this one. I gave it four stars. It was a really good, very political sci-fi. Um, honestly, from like other people's reviews and stuff, I expected it to be a little more romance heavy and it was not. And honestly, I liked that. Like, I loved the romance in this book because it was very slow burn. It was very much like them getting to know each other and work through their own problems and not an insta love and it didn't take over the whole plot of the book. So that I really, really appreciated. We're following two main characters. Our one main character is like a prince, but he's like pretty far down the line. And like his only purpose is to like have a political marriage. And then we're also following the person that he eventually has to marry, who is I believe like a count or a governor from another planet. He was supposed to marry a different member of the royal family who dies and so like they make a real quick shotgun wedding and marry these two. Like they've never even met. They're just like, hey, you're married now. And they're trying to like navigate this like highly political situation where the whole like planetary system of this empire is being basically tested to make sure they're still like allowed to exist by the powers that be basically. And there's a lot of underhanded people trying to like undermine the whole situation. And then we also have like this murder mystery, like was the original prince killed? Did he die of an accident? It's seeming more like he was murdered and it was not an accident. We're trying to figure out why. And honestly, I really enjoyed it. After the end of it, I'm pretty excited to read book two. I didn't think I was gonna like it as much as I did. And honestly, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised. Then we have Illuminae and I DNF'd this. Honestly, I didn't even really try. I skimmed it a little bit and read a couple of the pages and honestly I have never clicked with a J. Kristoff book. I tried to read Nevernight, DNF'd. I tried to read Aurora Rising, DNF'd. And then I tried to read this and I'm like DNF. Like it's just not for me. I think it's just like Kristoff's writing style. I don't know what it is. I was really interested because of the way this book was written. I think it's really cool that it's like that multimedia format, but it just didn't work for me. So we're gonna pass this one along. And that's another one off the exploding TBR. On a better note, we have a memory called Empire. This book <laughs> intimidated me so much. Like I was so nervous to get into this book because it just seemed like something that was too smart for me. And honestly, like the, probably the first like 20 to 50 pages, I was like, man, this might be a DNF. I'm not sure. Like stuff is wild and I don't understand it. And then I pushed through and I'm really glad I did because I ended up giving this four stars and I'm interested in seeing what happens next. We're following an ambassador from a space station when she goes to, you know, work at the main capital planet of this empire and the space station is not a member of the empire but they um are friendly with them they have a pact that kind of they won't overtake the station and the station can remain independent well she goes and she finds out that her predecessor has been murdered and shit starts happening where she is in danger and she has this like memory implant that is supposed to help her. Like all of her people have these like implants 
and it gives you like the memories of your predecessor and it's supposed to be able to help you like do your job better and stuff like that. Well, hers malfunctions does not work and she's like lost, doesn't know what to do, doesn't know who she can trust or what she's doing. And honestly, I really enjoyed it. And then at the end, there is like a smidgen baby little bit of romance, but like it's literally just like a kiss and you're like, whoa, where'd that come from? But I don't hate it. Really, really liked this book. A couple of the things was like the names of the people in the empire were so weird. They were all formatted like it was a number and a noun. So like one of our main characters is three seagrass and then 12 azalea and our emperor was like six direction. That took some getting used to when I was reading it but I still really enjoyed this. I also read The Gone World by Tom Spelterlich and I gave this four stars. I really enjoyed it. And honestly, I don't think I've seen anybody really talk about this here on booktube, but you're sleeping on it. I think if you like Blake Crouch's books, you'll really like this as well. It has a lot of that same feel to it where it's like a thriller mystery wrapped in sci-fi Honestly, it was just a lot of fun and it was a lot of brain power to read it, but in a good way. So we're following our main character who is a NCIS agent. And yes, at some point there is a reference to the TV show. Someone makes a reference to Gibbs and it was hysterical, but she's an NCIS agent and she works for a specific branch where they cover time and space travel. And the book is actually set in 1997, <laughs> but there is time travel. So she goes like forward to 2005, and then she goes, I think forward to 2015 at one point. And the way they describe time travel is really cool and different than I've ever seen it described in a book. And that is where when you time travel, it is to a possible future. Like it's not set in stone. And then your current present kind of goes on pause until you return. But nobody in your current present ages, but you do during this trip. So it's like our main character is supposed to be like in her 20s, but technically because of all the time travel, she's like in her late 30s. It's wild. Um, so basically she is trying to figure out this like murder mystery that's happening in 1997 present time where former NCIS agents and their families are being brutally murdered. And then there's like a bigger plot at play where there's this thing called the Terminus. And the Terminus is basically the end of the world and y'all it is depressing and wild. Like people dying and like running into the ocean and drowning themselves, it's wild. And she has actually experienced this in one of her like time travel things that she had to do training with the Navy and ended up losing a limb. So she has a prosthetic leg during the entirety of this book. Whew, y'all. It is so hard to explain because this book is so weird. And honestly, after reading this, I think it might be better than the Blake Crouch book I've read. I know Blake Crouch is like super popular and I think he actually blurbed this book. Yeah, there, uh, one of the blurbs on the back is from Blake Crouch. I like this better than I liked Dark Matter. So I recommend trying this one out. Then we had another unfortunate DNF and it was Lagoon by Nadia Korafor and I didn't get very far into it. I just couldn't get into it. And normally I like Nettie Okorafor's books and her writing, but I've only read the novellas. So this is like a full length book and it's first contact, but it's really weird. And it's set in Nigeria, which is really cool. And honestly, like I can't tell you much because it just started. But in the prologue, it took me a bit to understand that the POV we were reading from in the prologue was a swordfish because the sea creatures were the first ones to make contact with these extraterrestrials. I don't know what's going on. I'm not gonna unhaul this one 
just yet. I may give it another try, maybe when I'm, I'm feeling spicy again, but this is a temporary DNF, I think. Then probably my favorite of the month is going to surprise you, but that is um, Descender Volume 1, and this is a sci-fi graphic novel, and y'all, I loved it. It was so cute, and the art, the art is so good. Um, we're following this boy who is an AI, and he just kind of, like, wakes up and does not know what's going on, and it's been years that he's been asleep, and everybody that he knows, his family is dead. So he was like a companion droid, basically, for a little boy on a mining planet. Well, everyone on this planet has died. Come to find out, many years before, the world was attacked by, like, rogue bots. And after that happened, pretty much everybody went on this spree of, like, destroying all AI and bots. So we have people that are like after him to kill him and scrap him out. People that are trying to save him, like the doctor that created him. And then we have like this other faction that's like trying to help him. So it is really cool. Um, I really want to get to the second one, but I love it. And there's a robot dog. How could you not love a robot dog? And then my final book of September, I just finished reading, and it is another one off of my exploding TBR, and I was pleasantly surprised because it's another one I don't really hear people talking about, and it doesn't have the best reviews on Goodreads, and that is Eight Will Fall. I was pleasantly surprised. I gave this four stars. I had a good time. It was not what I expected. For some reason, I thought this was like superhero-esque, right? Wrong. This is a standalone YA fantasy horror. It definitely borders more adult, but whew, it was good. It was interesting. It had a really cool concept. We're following this girl named Larkin, and she is a miner. She's like 17. Her and her brother work in the mines, and that is one of the only jobs that she can get because she is what they call an empath, and empaths are the people that have magic in this world, and magic has been outlawed. Surprise, surprise, said no one ever this right away fantasy. Well, she ends up being like taken by like the royal guard and taken to the palace, her and her brother. And then her brother is left in the prison while she is taken in to like meet with the queen. And then there's like a group of other empaths that are all in there. And she's like, what is going on? So this queen is sending these um, seven empaths plus a guide into what is called the reach. And it's like this tunnel system underneath their island. Think the movie, The Descent. And hold on to that thought. So people have been disappearing into the reach. Her guards, a lot of her army, and then other empaths, but you know, the queen don't care about the empaths, like not at all. So she sends these untrained children basically into the reach to destroy the like evil that has been locked away there. Nobody knows why these kids were chosen. They think it's just because they're empaths, they're expendable, and the evil that has been locked there is said to be like the root of um, the empath's like bloodline basically and like the like root of their magic. So they're sent in there basically spelunking just like in The Descent. And it gets gory really quick. And when I say gory, I mean this was surprising. Like eyeballs on the walls, like ripped open human flesh, like it was gory. There was a lot of, lot of body horror in this book that I was not expecting. And normally I don't like body horror, but it didn't bother me, but it, it's, it's intense. Like I said, think the descent. But what's really cool is the magic system. The magic system is actually based around emotion, but not your own emotion. It's based on like siphoning the emotion of other people. And you can either create or destroy depending on the types of emotions. If it is like negative emotions, anger, fear, 
things like that you can destroy with your magic if you siphon it off of another person. But if you, it is love, happiness, happy memories, things like that, you can actually conjure and create things like ropes and bridges and homes and like a plethora of other things. And they don't know much about their magic because it's been outlawed, but they kind of are learning more and more about the actual magic and what actually happened as they're spelunking trying to kill this evil. Now there is a romance and it is not poorly done. A lot of times in books like these, like the romance kind of bothers me because it's in like life or death situations and you're like, no. But in this one, like for one, it makes sense. For two, it's super minimal. So it's not like they're in the midst of being slaughtered and they're like, let's make out. Like they had sweet moments when it was quiet or like when, you know, they were scared and it was like, you know, a touch or a hug or a, things like that. Not like a, oh my God, I love him. Like too much, too much. But honestly, I really liked this book and I've, t I've talked about it for a while. Maybe I should do a full like standalone review, but it's a, it's a standalone too. Like, I don't know. I would say pick it up. All right. Ah, uh, this was a long one, right? I read a lot in the month of September, surprisingly. Let's see if I can keep up the trend and read a lot in the month of October too, because I have a lot I want to get through in the month of October. Let me know if you have read any of these books, what you think about them, especially if you've read like Eight Will Fall or Lagoon because I know Lagoon is one that I'm like, I kind of still want to read it, even though I DNF'd it. Some people love it, some people hate it, so I don't know how I feel about it right now. Um, let me know if you've read the rest of like the Southern Reach trilogy, because y'all that confused the hell out of me, like in a good way, but I was confused. All right, well, thank you guys for hanging out with me. My name is Jessie and I will talk to you next time. Bye.